Elementor is the new kid in town when it comes to page builders for WordPress. It's so fast and sleek and easy to work with. The great thing with Elementor is that it's fast. And that's important to emphasize now that we're talking about SEO. So we're talking about if Elementor is good or bad for SEO. And let me just state from the beginning, it's awesome. But there's a few things you need to know. First of all, you need to get your website really, really fast. So I'm using Elementor together with the theme called Astra. They also have their own theme called Hello. I used that for a little while, but I couldn't figure out how to use the widget area. You know, when you have the blog post, sometimes you want some widgets and of course you need to show some ads out there if you want to make money with premium ads, which I certainly do on all my websites. Many page builders will slow down your site, so speed is definitely one of the most important things to look at here. And that has to do, of course, with how the code is made and if it's quickly executed, and that works just fine. But speed is also about reducing the number of plugins you have on your site. And with Elementor, you can do that quite substantially. You can get rid of all your pop-up plugins, and these are typically something that will slow down your site, and they're also quite expensive. If you upgrade to the Elementor Pro, you can save a lot of money on a ton of plugins, like the pop-up, for example. So Elementor will do pop-ups for you, and they will also do these exit intent pop-ups, and you can set all the conditions you can think of, you know, came from this page to this page, or if you had this behavior, then you want to show this pop-up after this many seconds, or when the user does this or that, you know. All these great features are built into Elementor. Another great feature that will save you another plugin is the table of content feature. You can simply build that into your template for all your blog posts and your pages. That means that you don't need a separate plugin and it also means that you never forget to put it into your articles. That is just great. And the last plugin you can definitely skip off your list is the contact plugin. There's a lot of contact form built into Elementor and they work great and they look awesome. You can customize them and style them exactly like you want to match the colors and the themes you're using on your sites. Now let's talk about some things you need to think about when you're using Elementor in order to get all the SEO settings and features just right. One thing that Elementor can mess with on your website is the header tags. You know, the H2s, the H3s and the H4s and so on. So go over all the templates you're using. Let's say you have a template for all your blog posts, pages and your archive pages. Just make sure to check the HTML for header tags because sometimes Elementor will wrap some of the text and some of the headings and the bolded text and so on in an H4 or an H3. And we don't want that to mess with the SEO on the site. We want to control exactly which words and phrases we place into the header tags because that's an important factor when it comes to SEO in Google. Whatever you put there, Google will maybe rank you a little better for. So check that out. One way I do this is by always using the table of content feature because when I'm doing that, it will grab all the H2, H3s and H4s and so on. And I can quickly see if I messed with the template for this page or for this blog post. And if there's some header tags that are showing up there, I will see them in the table of content before I hit publish. But it's also very easy to just go into the source code of the page, search for H2, H3, H4, and just see what pops up. So what about SEO plugins like Rank Math or Yoast and so on? They all work just fine with Elementor. You can just install them and they will give you all the features you need for that purpose. But personally, I'm not using Yoast or any other SEO plugin for that matter. Check the video that I linked to up here in the cards. In that video, I'm showing you how I get more traffic, better rankings, more visibility in the search without an SEO plugin. I know it sounds just weird, but it's true. Check out the video and I'll explain it to you in that video. One of the things that I like from not using an SEO plugin is that I'm not telling Google which meta description I want them to show in the search result page. And that often means that Google will grab a longer text and sometimes I will have three or four lines in the search result page because Google feels confident that they have found the right text for the reader. And also they will find some text inside my blog post that matches 
the search phrase from the user. So if you searched about something specific that's way down into my article, Google would pull up that text and show that to the reader. And it also saves me a ton of time. But that's not why I'm doing it, of course. It's just an added benefit. I would gladly take out 10 or 20 seconds to write a meta description if I thought it made a good difference, but I'm sure I'm getting more traffic without. But even if you take the time to write those meta titles, sometimes Google will alter the length of the meta title. So a few times all of us had to go into hundreds of articles and shorten the meta descriptions and the next month we needed to write them longer. And it's just really frustrating to have to go over all your websites in order to change all the metadata. So it's great not to have to do that anymore. And the last thing I want to talk about with the Yoast plugin is those little dots that are typically red, yellow or green. You know, when you're working with outsourced writers, which I think you should do sooner than later, I have a big team of writers myself. When those writers see that there's a yellow dot or a red dot, they will do what they can to make it green. And that means they will start repeating some keywords, you know, and do all these old school tactics in order to satisfy a piece of software. We don't want that for our sites. We want them to write good natural language text and not try to sound like a robot and repeating the same keywords over and over again just to satisfy a piece of software. We also need to talk a bit about mobile friendliness because that is huge today. As you know, most users today are visiting your site from mobile unless you are in a very weird niche. That also means that Google is looking first on how your website looks on a mobile screen in order to decide where you're going to rank in Google. So with Elementor, there's a lot of things you can do very, very easily. Down in the left corner when you're designing your site, you can switch between iPad or tablet mode, desktop and mobile mode. And when you do that, you can quickly set some specific settings for that device. Let's say you have too much padding in the sides for your mobile screen. You just click the little mobile logo and you can change the padding specifically for mobile. Let me show you how to do that because it's really, really easy, but it's important to get this right in order to secure the best rankings for your website. When you click down here, you can see this responsive mode. You can shift between desktop, tablet and mobile. So let's say I wanted to check out how this looks on a mobile screen. I just click mobile and I can instantly see it. And let's say that I want the margins here to be smaller. Then I just click here, I go to advanced mode and I can quickly edit that here with the margin and the padding settings. And then if I move back to desktop, they will have their own settings. It's just really, really cool and a quick way to check what your website looks like on tablets, mobiles and desktop instantly and just do the changes that you need to do right there. One other thing you need to think about with Elementor is to choose a theme that works well with Elementor. As I told you before, I'm using the Astra theme. It works really, really well. You just need to Google the theme you want to use and see if anybody else had some issues with it. For example, you need to have jQuery turned on in the theme. The easiest way to check this is to go into WordPress and just search for the theme and see how many installs there are out there. Make sure to go for a theme with a lot of installs. If you check out Astra, for example, you can see that I think it's hundreds of thousands of installs. When you see that, you know you have a winner because it will most probably work with Elementor and everything else you know. That's great for security reasons and also when we're talking speed and a lot of other things. There's a few other SEO aspects you need to think about when working with Elementor. One thing is that when you're working with templates, and that's what you do all the time inside Elementor, you use all these beautiful templates. You need to check the font sizes because sometimes they build it with pretty small font sizes. And that means that the text will be a little cramped and sometimes some people will have a hard time reading it. I advise you to always use fonts between 16 to 18 pixels. That means that the text will space out beautifully on the page and it also allows for a longer page and a longer blog post. And that means that you will be able to show more ads. And that's definitely something to think about because the longer the article is and the longer people scroll, the more ads they will see and the more money you will make. You also need to make sure that you space out clickable elements. This is something Google will alert you about in Google Search Console if you're not getting it right. 
Every time there's something you can click on, something that's a link, you know, it's a button or it's text links or whatever. If you have some clickable elements that's too close, you need to space them out a little bit. Because on a mobile screen, you know, with a big thumb like mine, it's not easy to hit the right link if they are placed too close. So that's about the mobile friendliness aspects. And the last tip I have for you is to just don't go overboard, you know. In Elementor you can do so many pretty and beautiful things. You can choose from a ton of elements that looks awesome. But try to keep it simple and allow for some white space. Also when we're talking SEO, because if you cram in too many elements on the page, it will load too slowly. I hope you'll subscribe to my video and give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.